Hi friends, welcome back to the course. So today we will look into another case study. So in the first case study, we saw how to model a washing machine in which there is an eccentricity or there is a rotary unbalance because of the non-uniform loading of clothes. So then we found out what will be the response now a similar problem where the excitation will be harmonic but it will be slightly different in in few ways we will have a detailed look into that so obviously uh, we can call this as base excitation or um, harmonic base excitation and whatever it is so before explaining what what uh, does this mean i want to talk about a few examples from real life so that you can also appreciate what I'm going to describe in the next 10 to 15 minutes. I think always some some collecting some physical examples or real life examples will help you to forge a particular concept into your head quite smoothly rather than just mugging up some formulas. So without much ado, now let's go ahead and see this case so actually uh, this is an idealized model of an automobile then you can ask what is this so this is the profile of the road so usually when a vehicle travels on the road usually there will be a lot of undulations here in India, our roads are not that smooth, especially in village areas. We usually, we will come across this kind of road. road. So what happens is the base of the vehicle is having a displacement. Fine. Now, due to this kind of undulations in the ground, there will be definite response for the vehicle. Now we want to figure out how the vehicle will respond to road irregularities in the road. Fine, so th this is in natural, this is what we are going to do. And another example is, let's say in industry, we have a high precision equipment, for example, uh, this is for just for example so for measuring circularity and all um, let's say in space applications we need a circularity measurement um, in the order of let's say one micrometer then we need very specific equipments to get this accuracy now once we install this equipments or measuring instruments we want to ensure that so there is a base and over which our instrument is mounted let's say this is my instrument and this is base now we have to ensure that whatever vibrations this particular person this particular base is having it should not be transmitted to the instrument because if it is transmitted then your measurements won't be accurate so these are the two real life examples where we want to study the response of a structure or a system against base excitations. So now we, we will go ahead and mathematically formulate this problem. So before that, just hold on for a minute. And I have a question for you. Actually, if I ask you, how many degrees of freedom does this particular system have? So you can pause the video and then think over it and then come back. Actually, even though there are two variables here, x and y, people may think that this is a two degree of freedom system, but that is wrong because y is completely defined. So the profile of the road here, I have assumed to it to be a harmonic when you study random vibration and all those things, the profile may be different. But in this case, 
this y of x if i call this function as y of x this is completely deterministic so we can if you are thinking y as a degree of freedom then you are wrong so you are only left with one variable which is x so that means this particular system is a single degree of freedom system okay so we discussed about two real life examples both of those real life examples can be mathematically idealized as something like this where you can see the base here it is having a displacement of y of t which is non a priori then there is a stiffness associated with the system then there is a damper now this is the mass in the first example this will be the mass of this will be our vehicle then in the second example it will be the instrument the measuring instrument so having done the mathematical idealization the next step is to figure out what is the equation of motion for this particular system so going ahead now the force acting in the spring will be it won't be kx it will be kx minus y because the spring is it's see the spring force is kx in this case when this point is not moving but if you have a spring let's say if you have a spring let's say at this point is moving by x2 amount and this point is moving by x1 amount so in a general sense we can say the force in the spring is x2 minus x1 assuming that the spring is in the state of tension we usually assume that way when we set up the equations so it, it will take care automatically so don't have to worry about all this stuff when you are writing equation of motion so just assume all your elements are in state of tension then you are in then you are okay will the signs of those quantities will take care whether it is compressive or whether it is tensile and all those still things will be taken care of so you don't have to worry about this so this was a simple concept which i had to tell in between i hope that was useful now so this force in the damper will be c into x dot minus y now we have all the forces acting on the system now let's sum it up sum them up so mx double dot is equal to minus kx minus y plus again a minus sign because it is acting in the opposite direction so x dot minus y dot so here we see mx double dot and bringing the cx dot term plus kx over here this is equal to ky plus cy dot so now look at this particular portion so now this is the forcing function now we have derived a set of formulas for the case where this right hand side will assume a, the form of a harmonic function what does that effectively mean so whatever formulas we have established we can use them given that your base is undergoing a harmonic base exc excitation because then not only the sum of these two terms will be harmonic so that's why when you open up a textbook there's always say harmonic base excitation so that is the reason why we are limiting the displacement of the base to be harmonic because we have developed the theory for harmonic excitations so using the developed theory at this point of time we have to limit the displacement of the base to be harmonic